I thought to start out today, I would show you which pieces are what on the cutting mat. So I've just removed the rest of the piece of paper from my cutting mat and I've left all the pieces in place where they were cut. So this way you can look at this and kind of see what I mean when I say the feet and everything. So right up here we have six ovals. These are going to be two shoes. One shoe, another shoe. Right below those we have the hands, one set and another set, and the noses are right there. These three are the hats, the body, the beard, the book cover, the book spine. There's only two of these because I just wanted to make it have just a tiny bit of dimension and then the pages to the book. So those are what the pieces are. That way you can, if you kind of watch that part of the video, this part of the video, you can kind of get an idea of where things are on the cutting mat. So I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'm gonna remove everything, put it in groups on my work tile, get my glue out, and I'll come back and we'll start gluing together. We'll talk about the pattern. thought to start out today I would show you which pieces are what on the cutting mat. So I've just removed the rest of the piece of paper from my cutting mat and I've left all the pieces in place where they were cut. So this way you can look at this and kind of see what I mean when I say the feet and everything. So right up here we have six ovals. These are going to be two shoes. One shoe, another shoe. Right below those we have the hands, one set and another set and the noses are right there. These three are the hats, the body, the beard, the book cover, the book spine. There's only two of these because I just wanted to make it have just a tiny bit of dimension and then the pages to the book. So those are what the pieces are. That way you can, if you kind of watch that part of the video, this part of the video, you can kind of get an idea of where things are on the cutting mat. So I'm going to turn the camera off, I'm going to remove everything, put it in groups on my work tile, get my glue out, and I'll come back and we'll start gluing together. We'll talk about the pattern. All right, I've got all my parts off of the cutting mat and I've kept them in groups and I put the nose pieces with the hand pieces so I don't mix them up with the feet because they are slightly different size. So I've got my glue over here and I've got a toothpick to put my glue on with. And I won't make you watch me do all of these because it's going to take me a few minutes to get these all done. But we'll talk about the pattern while I glue the first few. So you can get the pattern by following the link in the description box below that will take you to my blog post for this video. And in that blog post there will be a link to the pattern download. The pattern download is free and you can use it to make ones for yourself or to sell. Just don't pass out my pattern to other people because you guys visiting the video and visiting my blog are the only compensation I get for the time I spend making these. So I really would like to be able to keep giving them to you, but I need some cooperation from you guys. Uh, in the pattern that you download, you will have three items. It will be a file with three things in it. There will be a PNG file to use with your cutting machine, which is what I use today. There will be a text file that will tell you a little bit about the details about this particular pattern as far as sizing it and my suggestions if you haven't downloaded a PNG into your cutting machine before. Um, I know how to use a Cricut. I don't know how to use a, a, a silhouette, so I'm not sure exactly what the things are called on there, but I, you know, I, I gave you directions as far as I know for what I do for my Cricut. Um, there's also a PDF file if you want to cut this out by hand. So all you have to do is print that off onto or have it printed onto a piece of cardstock. So what we are cutting this out of is a medium weight white cardstock. It's the stuff that you buy over in the card making supplies for the at the craft store and it's usually pretty inexpensive. It's just a medium weight or a regular weight cardstock. Um, and I do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, that way we only have to have white on hand. And also I find through experience that um, the paints, the acrylic paints, are a lot more light fast than the colored cardstock. So for these I usually use um, 
the white and then we paint it. Also, the paint helps disguise all of these layers of cardstock. So I am going to, oops, that one is not glued together correctly. I am going to finish gluing everything together in its sets. Um, like I said, as I was showing you the pieces, the only one that's not a set of three is this binding for the book. That's only two. I'm going to get these glued together. I'm going to put a w small weight on it and let these dry completely. They do need to be completely dry before we go to our painting step because this, if these are damp and we put them down on our tape to hold up still to paint, they will tear when we pull them off. So when these are dry, I will come back and we can start our painting. All right, all my units are glued and they've actually dried overnight. I had them under a weight so they stayed nice and flat. And I've divided them up on top of sticky tape that's facing sticky side up by colors. This makes it much easier to keep track of what I've got and to make sure I get everything painted the right colors. So let's go over what we've got and what colors they're going to be. Here I have the book pages and the beard. They're both going to be white and then I'll add the tiniest bit of gray to the beard just to give it some dimension. I have the shoes up here. They'll be black. I have the book and the book binding. They're both going to be kind of a burgundy red, wine red color, but I'm going to make the binding just probably the tiniest bit at just a spot of white to make it just a little bit lighter so that there's definitely a difference and then we're going to add something to it later. The hat and the body are both going to be a dark blue, although we really won't see the body, I don't think, but it's going to get painted the same color as the hat. And then the hands and the nose, I'm going to mix a, P a uh, skin tone because I still don't have skin tone paint. I've been to the craft store many times. The skin tone is always the color that's missing. So I will paint the first few on camera. Then I'm going to turn the camera off, paint them. I'll get some pictures of what colors I use and all of that. And those will be on the blog post. So let's start with the beard and the uh, book pages. And I'm just using whatever craft paint I've got on my table. Um, is there enough? There's not enough in here to actually put a little bit up. I'll actually put a little drop of this out because I will need a drop of it anyway. It's an old bottle, so now it's got a a lump in it. So let's start with just some white. And yes, I do want to paint the, the pieces white, not just leave them plain paper. For one thing, it changes the texture slightly, so they'll look more cohesive if everything has been painted. It also helps, it's another way of disguising, that we've got a bunch of layers of paper here, not a solid piece of something heavier. All right, now I'm going to very quickly put out a tiny drop of gray right here. Well, I guess I won't, it won't come out. I think I need to go buy a bunch of colors of paint is what I'm going to have to do pretty soon. Take just a little bit, and I just want to brush it lengthwise into his beard. And not much of the beard is going to show on our gnome today. But I just don't want it flat white. I learned that little trick from a gal that was painting a gnome to go on her real life porch and I thought it just looked really cool. Let's go ahead and get the shoes so I can... I'll do the shoes later. I'm going to do the back line after I get the front done. So we have our, our burgundy color. So I will turn the camera off. I will go ahead and get all of these painted. Um, some of them will need two coats. Um, probably this one will. It looks like it's awfully translucent. So I will get these painted. I'll get the paint completely dry because we don't want to start gluing until the paint is dry. If we do, the glue could reactivate the paint and make a big mess. So when I have these all painted and they're dry, I'll come back and we can start assembling our gnome. All right, my paint is pretty dry. On the binding, I want to add just a little bit of gold. I've got my Ceramicote 14 karat gold. Whoops, there it is. Let's 
zoomed you in a little bit. And one thing to note on this, there is a dip on one end and a rounded end on the other. This is the top with the dip. This is the bottom with the round. So when you're gluing those, you'll need to be careful. Now I have a dotting tool here that's pretty small. And I just want to make a couple of gold bands just to add a little interest to my book just to make it look not quite so boring. And if there are strange noises in, behind, in the background, the cat's got a bell toy and they're putting a new roof on my building. So there's going to be random noises today. I'm sorry about that. So I'm going to let that gold paint dry. And when that is has about 10, 15 minutes, just to get dry enough that I can move these, I'm going to move my tape back out of the way and we can start gluing the pieces together. So I'll be back when that happens. All right, these are the first four pieces we're going to work with, the body and the beard and the book and the pages to the book. I've got my glue over here off camera. We're going to start by putting the beard onto the body. Now, like I said earlier, most of this is really not going to show, but we're still going to put it on to help the gnome stand up against the wall and also for structural support. So I am going to put some glue on here and I don't have to be really neat because most of this will be hidden. I'm going to put my beard on. I'm going to do my best to center it on the body and then I'm going to double check by standing it up that the beard does not hang down below the body. That's important. Now the book, we're going to go to the top of the book, which is the V side, the top V there. I'm going to put some glue on the back of the book. And the pages are designed to go down behind it. And you can have, get it centered and then kind of work it around so that the the pages look like they're coming out of the binding of the book. There we go. I get that. I'll fiddle with that off camera to get it just where I want it. I want these bits of glue to dry to the point where nothing will move when we put our next pieces on. So when this dries, I'll come back and we'll go on to our next step. All right, now that my glue's had time to set up a little bit so those won't move around, we're going to get a little more glue. We're going to put it on the beard. I'm going to attempt to not have my hands shake too badly. But I'm going to put, and this is, the book is only going to touch the beard. It's not going to touch the body. Now, try and center it over the beard. And again, we want this to come right to the bottom of, even with the bottom of the, the gnome. And I think that's off a little bit. So I'm going to get this centered and kind of moved around to where I want it. So the book sticks out. Oh, that looks, okay, that looks pretty good now. I'm going to let that dry. And when that gets dry, we can add the hat. So I'll be back when this has time to set up. All right, the glue is set up enough that I'm confident that won't move. So now I have my hat. I'm gonna put glue on the bottom of the back of the hat. And I wanna have this set up not quite touching the book. Oops, the pages of the book. And I think I'm going to get a craft stick to lay under the hat because this one I don't really want him. I don't want his hat leaning because there's nothing there to support the lean. All right, I'm going to let that glue set up so that it doesn't move. And then when that happens, we'll come and put the details on. So I'll be back in a sec. All right, my glue has set up and hopefully the guys working on the roof have gone to lunch because I would just like a few minutes without big noises. 
So I'm gonna put some glue right under the hat where the nose goes. I'm gonna use my stick with the glue on it to kinda of get that in there. Hopefully I'm not getting my head in front of the camera. All right, now, the little shoes go on the corners of the book. And they're meant to kind of sit at an angle. And like I said earlier, I'm not worried about glue showing. I've said this before making these because we are going to coat it all with Mod Podge. The Mod Podge will not only seal it, but it will, and make it look more finished, it will also help everything to stay together. So we're gonna put this at an angle. And I want it kind of tipped out. That's kind of how these are designed to go. I had kind of, I had started to make this as a standing gnome and I thought, no, he needs to be sitting down and comfortable while he's reading his book. So I'm using this lining up at the bottom of the gnome to make sure those little feet are in the right spot. Push down. Let's get here, a little bit here, get my hands on, come on, whoops, I got the hand on upside down, come on, come on, play with those a little bit more off camera. Now remembering that the that the binding for the book has a dip down at the top and a rounded bottom. And now I'm gonna get rid of that. And there we go. Let's let that glue dry. And, oops, I want the glue to be completely dry before I come back to put on the Mod Podge because if that glue is not dried and cured and become clear, sealing it under the Mod Podge could cause it to remain cloudy and we wouldn't want that. So I am going to get this nice and straight. I'll probably play with that off camera, get everything exactly where I want it, <clears throat> and then let this glue dry and become clear. And then I'll come back and we can finish him off. All right, my glue has dried, and I just used some blue poster tack to hold him onto this little stick. Since he is so small, I would have trouble holding onto him. And I am putting on some satin Mod, po oops, satin mod Podge, just a very thin, light coat. I'm going to coat the front. When this front is dry, I will go ahead and coat the back, because I do like to coat the back with the Mod Podge also. I find that it helps the helps it to just stay a little more sturdy. It also finishes everything off and helps those joints that are on the back side of the project to not come apart so easily later. So remember a thin, light coat. You don't want a thick coat of Mod Podge because Mod Podge has a very nasty habit of staying sticky once after it dries if you put on too much. So I am going to let this dry. I'm gonna wrap up my brush. When this dries, I will come back and put a coat on the back. I'll do that off camera. And when that, when everything's dry, I'll meet you at the dollhouse and we'll see how he looks. All right, I've moved our little book reading gnome over to the front porch of the dollhouse. I think he turned out absolutely adorable. I hope you guys do too. Uh, remember, if there's something you want to see me make, be sure and mention it to me either in the comments, over on the Facebook page, or just message me. I love getting requests from you guys. It makes my job a lot easier. Be sure and hop over to the blog post. There'll be a link to the free downloadable pattern as well as photos and hints and tips and written instructions for the project. If you like the video, be sure and hit the like button, leave me a comment. If you enjoy my content and haven't subscribed, I encourage you hit that subscription button and the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Thank you very much for watching today and I will talk to you next time. Bye.